Laurie, it's been a while since we last caught up. Are you able to provide some sort of update and your reflection on how the season's gone so far? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think overall we are we're, we're really pleased with things. Um, I'd probably break um, in some ways the season down to sort of two component parts to this point. Um, we obviously had pre-Christmas, then we've we've made the change that everyone's aware of. Um, and since that point, um, yeah, ex extremely pleased, extremely proud of the efforts that's gone in across every single department within the club. Um, we, uh, yeah, we've won, uh, I think, seven from ten, ten games, um, and the group's in an extremely positive place, which is uh, extremely pleasing to see. Um, but there's still eight games of the regulation season left to go, so we know that the next block of games, once we've sort of completed this small rest period are going to be vital for us. We'll take each week as it, as it comes. Um, I'm certainly not placing any any specific pr uh, pressure on anyone. Um, and uh, yeah, we hope by the end of the season we're, we're still in an equally positive space. I guess what everyone wants to know is what's the latest in the hunt for a new head coach at Harlequins? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And uh, I, I guess the, to reassure everyone, um, we're still going through uh, that diligent process. Um, we are taking a bit of our time because we want to make sure that the way the way we take this coaching structure forward and the person that we bring in to develop the group um, is absolutely the right person for Harlequins. Um, the good thing is that because the team's been playing well, performing well, getting the right results, that's clearly um, invited a greater degree of interest. Um, so we've been having some fascinating conversations with the people. It's given us the um, a bit of headroom to take some, as I say, to take some stock, to take some time. So I'm confident by the time we get to the end of the season, we'll know the structure that we want to take us forward and we'll have found the right person um, that, as I say, fits, fits the culture that we've got here at the club and, and we'll bring the very best out of the group uh, in order to perform to the best of their abilities, hopefully. The government announced their loan survival programme. What does that actually mean for Harlequins? It's been crucial for Harlequins because, first of all, I think the initiative was announced back in November before we played Exeter from memory. Um, it's taken us a fair bit of time to get through the process. Um, so a huge amount of credit should be given to our finance team um, for the diligence involved. Um, and to be fair, to Sport England uh, for working with us to, to enable it to happen. Um, but it's a loan. Um, it's a loan with interest, so we'll have to pay it back. Um, but what it does do is it's a multi-million pound loan that alleviates some of our cash flow pressures that we were going to have over the next few months, um, particularly obviously on our, on our ownership. So it allows us to maintain that degree of independence. Um, it also, uh, I mean, it doesn't cover salaries particularly. So there's specific areas of our cost base that it will only fund. Um, so we've still got to be self-sufficient in our own right in, in, in many ways. Um, but what it does do is ease the pressure on our operating costs. Um, and when we do open the stoop, um, uh, hopefully in May, and then more formally um, for next season, it gives us the opportunity to do some essential works around the ground that will then make us a bit more fit for purpose when we, when we open the gate. So it's hugely important for us, um, and we're obviously we're, we're grateful to get it done. So Laurie, last week was obviously a difficult week for Harlequins with the news that Mike Brown will be moving on at the end of the season. Are you able to provide some sort of update on that situation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and look, it's, it has been a, an incredibly emotional few days for everyone within the club. Um, we've announced that we're going to be saying goodbye to someone who's been in the Quinns family for many, many years and he's going to be leaving us at the end of the season. Um, but I do think it is important to provide some balanced context um, because there is ultimately going to be two perspectives on the, on the, on the discussion. Um, and also, not least, there's been quite a bit written in the media and on social media um, uh, regarding the loyalty that, that exists within the club. Um, and I want to rigorously defend that because we do have really good people within the club from the board downwards that work really hard to preserve and protect the feelings and emotions of everybody within the club. Um, regarding Mike, um, we actually began discussions with him on the subject of his contract in February 2020. Um, subsequently in December, the club took the decision that we weren't going to extend his contract for multiple reasons, not least trying to accommodate an ever-changing recruitment retention landscape. Um, players within, uh, within the squad, within our academy, that we felt would be developing slightly faster than maybe we thought. Um, and then linked to that, looking at how we transition the squad for in the seasons to come in two, three, four years time. Um, 
accepting though that in the turn of the new year we did have a slight change of position on things um, and we offered two further contracts to Mike. So in total over the last 12 months we've made three contract offers to Mike. Um, he has chosen to turn all of those down. Um, in parallel with that and separate to that we've had uh, discussions throughout the entirety of that process around supporting Mike, providing Mike with um, visibility and transparency on, on what life would look like from uh, post rugby and transitioning from professional sports into, into a normal working environment. And, and that's really been conducted through our um, player welfare uh, officer, Andy Sanger. Um, and, and those conversations continued throughout the entirety uh, of, 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 of the contract discussion or certainly over the, con uh, over the term of the last 12 months um, and will continue uh, until Mike leaves in the summer. Um, so it has been extremely emotional and difficult from all sides of the conversation um, and it's a bit difficult to really comment much further in some ways because the conversations that are being had are between an individual and his employer um, and I do firmly believe that much if not all of those conversations should really remain private and confidential. However, Mike has clearly been here for 17 years. Um, he will be regarded within the club and within the supporter base as a legend of that, I'm, I'm certain. Um, I know he will consider this his home uh, always and, and regardless of wherever he goes. Um, and uh, it saddens me that he feels we've let him down in some way. Um, but the whole club now has an opportunity, I think, to continue to do something positive th through the season, whether that's through the playing base, the coaches, the support staff, the stadium staff, all of our supporters. We hope that we're going to finish the season as strongly as we can do. Um, and then when we've done that, we'll, uh, we'll obviously wish Mike and his family all the very best of luck as he moves to Newcastle.